This isn't good. Unfortunately, the, or the nut for the sprocket has come off. The seal behind the sprocket has failed and there's oil everywhere. I'd say my ride's over. Alright, only a couple of hundred metres to the main road, from there we'll head to Laverton, refuel, get a couple of minor bits and pieces from the from the shop there. JP wants to check in at the cop shop, which is not a bad idea, it's a good practice. And uh, then we just check out at the other end, that way the cops know that we got off safely. And then of course after leaving Laverton we'll be on Great Central Road and I'm not quite sure how far we'll get today, it doesn't really matter. We're still trying to play catch up a little bit. We'll certainly get to Warburton and then take it from there. Well, we're at Laverton and just before Paul was going to refuel he noticed oil under his bike. It could be game over for him. We'll know more in a few minutes but it could be the, the airport shaft seal. So yeah, that could be fatal. Well, just going to remove that side cover. Just a couple of bolts. Uh, that'll expose the, uh, the, the the sprocket and we should get an idea then whether the oil leak is behind that. If it is, as I said, it's game over. You won't even be able to ride it out of here. Just always remember, if it can't be fixed with a hammer, it means it's electrical. He's in. No, I don't. Like I do at home. Yeah. You want some more chucks? Wipe it all off. Well, they think it's the seal that sits behind the, uh, the gear lever. So um, Tom reckons it, it's not a deal breaker. I mean, yes, it'll leak, but to replace that seal is not a big job if you have the seal. So we'll look at our options. One could be to get a seal delivered up to Alice Springs and uh, swap it out there, but we'll, we'll wait and see, yeah? Oh, that's terminal. That's the, uh, the, the output shaft seal that's blown. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. We're going to relocate to a workshop nearby. We've borrowed some tools off him already and the bloke is saying, look, just bring the bike around. That way, you know, we'll be able to have access to his tools and his facilities. And I guess what we've got to do now is come up with a plan. Tom believes he could swap the seal out if he had the part. So there's a number of options. But it's nearly noon on a Saturday, so if we don't organise parts now in the next hour or so, we're going to lose the next 36 hours. So we'll get it to the workshop, clean it up, have a look and take it from there. Well look, when you turn that light on, the room gets... Oh, the oil. Yeah. 
So um, organised to get him up here to lay the thing. So I need to speak to him. Well, we're making some calls. We're trying to source the seals. As long as we've got possession of the seals, that's half the battle won. So, yeah, ringing around uh, dealers in Perth, try and obtain the seal. Maybe get a couple, and uh, then try and organise somehow for those seals to get up here. Might have to rely on uh, on our safety network that we've had in place. Okay, so Steve, we think the problem is this oil seal here. Yeah. And what we're going to do, mate, is we're just going to start the motor very quickly and see how much fucking oil pushes out. Because that's what we do, that's what scientists do. It'll be a lot. Oh, that's the sound of a DRZ 400 fired up. These guys rode through some mud and crap a couple of days ago, and it could have been mud that had got behind an O ring and actually dislodged it partly and caused a leak. So they've cleaned everything up and they've put it back together, and they're just going to see if, if that's solved the problem. Uh, no apparent leak, they're just going to uh, put the chain back on and uh, yeah, take it around the block a couple of times and, and, and take it from there. It'd, it'd be a great outcome if they have fixed it. Although, as the rider, I'd always be worried about it. Um, I don't think we're going to travel far today. We'll probably end up bunking down here in Laverton, I think, tonight. Well, they've put the bike back together. He's going to take it for a run, give it some shtick, and uh, yeah, build up a bit of pressure, and we'll, we'll know more in a few minutes' time, I guess. Well, that road test didn't go at all well. But Cots hasn't shown up for a few minutes, and we thought, mm. Tom checked his phone. Cots has broken down out there somewhere. This isn't good. Unfortunately, the, the nut for the sprocket has come off. The seal behind the sprocket has failed and there's oil everywhere. I'd say my ride's over. So, Tom's gone to see what he can do. Probably just tow him back here, I guess, for now. <laughs> Is that why they call this adventure riding? Uh, things are very, very bad. Cops are broken down. Few kilometres out of town, somehow the front sprocket bolt has come off, the seal has come loose, and he's lost all his oil and he's on the side of the road. Tom's gone out there to have a look. I'm going to go out there and provide a bit of moral support. You're a great help, mate. Thanks very much. I was going to ask him if there was a broken motorcycle up here. Because I'm several kilometres out of town now and no sign of him. I'm wondering... They said he was on Great Central Road. Hmm. Well, I'll keep going. Well, I've travelled 33 kilometres out of town. I can't believe for a moment that a bloke would take a road test that far. So my guess is he's not on this road. Um... I mean, I didn't check the map, I was just going by what the blokes were saying. That is, yeah, on Great Central Road. I'll head back, and they'll probably beat me back, I think. Well, I'm back in Laverton. It was about a 65 kilometre round trip. Yeah, they did send me up the garden path. The bloke came out in the four-wheel drive looking for me. So, yeah, anyway. I've not really lost anything, so I'll go back to the workshop and I guess we'll assess just how bad the damage is, but my guess is that yeah, Paul's trip is over. That's not going to be a quick fix just by replacing a seal. It's cold too, single digits. Brr. All right. Paul's ride is over. This bloke, he's a local. It's his workshop that we've been using. And he's uh, he's offered us accommodation for the night. So we'll be under a roof, shower. So yeah, very generous of him, very generous. He's uh, been a great help today, lending his tools, lending his facilities. So you can't complain about 
the local support. And uh, yeah, we'll have a pub meal tonight, some fresh food for a change. And uh, yeah, I mean, Paul's bike is, is toast. We'll just have to organise recovery back to Perth, I guess, or Kalgoorlie. Kalgoorlie's about mm, 400 k's from here, I guess. Anyway, that uh, that's a problem for tomorrow morning. We'll sort out the logistics and, and then come up with a game plan as far as when we leave. That'll do, eh? Well, uh, one of the locals, the black has been helping us all day. DJ, he... Is it DJ? DJ. DJ. Um, he, 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 he's offered us accommodation for the night. I mean, we've got a, I don't know, three or four bedroom home. Yeah, you couldn't ask for anything else. You know, we're out of the weather. We can have a shower. <laughs> Each of us have got our own room. Granted, uh, you know, we've got to still put up our stretchers or or your inflatable mattress or whatever you use in a sleeping bag, but uh, gosh, you know, <laughs> Tom's freshly showered. He's been working like a dog today trying to get that bike going. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we've we been lucky. We, we've and, and we're having a pub meal tonight, so uh, that'll just top it off, I think. Well, there, there are our digs for the evening. Um, yeah, we've got to be thankful. I mean, everything that's happened, at least, you know, we've got a place to sleep out of the uh, out of the rain, and we've got shelter, and clearly we've got access to food and stuff. So, yeah, walk to the pub, have a have a pub meal and a couple of drinks, and then come back, lick our wounds, and then sort out the logistics of what's going to happen after tomorrow. My pleasure. Yeah, I'm 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 well, it's Sunday morning, pretty early. The mood is quite sombre, really. Uh, we're just packing up. Uh, four of us will leave at 8.30. Uh, Paul Cotts, he's organised uh, roadside assist to yeah, collect his bike today and probably head for Kalgoorlie, we think. Uh, there's a bike shop there. That's the nearest bike shop. I think that's about 400 kilometres from here. So I'm not quite sure when it's going to be picked up or when it'll be delivered. And I'm not sure his game plan, whether he's going to get it fixed there and try and join us somewhere down the track uh, or whether he's just going to get it home and and write it off as a bad experience. I've uh, been on rides myself where I've had to say goodbye to people. <laughs> It's always a sad moment. I mean, you start together, you like to finish together, but sometimes that doesn't always happen. So yeah, Paul will be here for a day or so. And hopefully the rest of our journey will be seamless. Although that wouldn't be any fun, would it? See you, mate. had a road report this morning and all the roads are open well for us at least closed the vehicles over four ton or something and no caravans but anyway
is the start of the dirt and it's going to be like that the next thousand kilometres or so with sprinklings of blacktop it's cold, it's uh, single digits well, this could go either way wasn't expecting that. I wonder where that's coming from and going to. That's a bit odd. You've got to feel sorry for these truck drivers. I mean, must be a slow old journey doing this crossing. Probably take them four or five days. Jesus, that's gooey there. Wow. There you have it. Looks like they're going to walk at first. I think it'll be okay, personally. You can see where he's just slip down probably trying to use momentum as you you know you need yeah, and the front has just slipped down in that hole I don't know where he is uh, he might have been picked up not going anywhere for a few days Tom's inbound making it look easy don't know whether we'll make it look that easy Yeah, as long as we uh, take it easy, paddle through and providing the front guard doesn't get choked up with mud, I think we'll be okay. If anybody's going to struggle, it'll be me. It's like peanut butter, it just sticks like shit to a blanket. It's a bit of a workout paddling through this stuff. What's gooey there? Is that the worst of it, Tom? Oh, you can.
can see where I think that's probably JP's bike it's a bit heavier oh this is soft this is soft now, there's another truck up here that's stuck I wonder how that wide load got through. Yeah, the lighter bikes can handle handle that slop a bit easier than me. I'll just sink. Mind you, I'm going to struggle to get through that too. I'll get up there and walk it. Wouldn't want to be out here by yourself on a big bike. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, others. Oh, shit, shit, shit. That's a tough grind. It's not the end of it, I don't think. Let's just pull up here and wait for Tom. Oh, looks like it might be dry high side maybe see the others they're a couple of hundred meters up the road this road was torn up earlier this year I did post a video a couple of months ago the road was closed for several weeks after a heavy storm Washed part of the road away. It was going to cost the Shire about a hundred million dollars to repair. It has been opened up since, but geez, looks like they're going to be out here again, I think. Now, this next bit could be a bit tricky. I can see a wheel track in front of me, probably from Chris's bike. I can see both wheel tracks now. It seems fairly firm underfoot. You know, I do lean to towards this bike for outback travel because it's so big and comfortable and I'm prepared to put up with a bit of misery and heartache and, and this is that misery and heartache I mean if the bike is suitable for 95% of the conditions then I'll take it if it's going to be any more than that then I'll leave it behind and take the DR650 but I don't mind a little bit of misery like this if it means the rest of the trip is relatively smooth sailing and this bike is only limited by the skill set of the pilot Whew, I hope there's not a lot more of that well that was a bit of fun Old mate here saved my bacon. Thank you. <laughs> right, there was a light vehicle that went past a few minutes ago. <laughs> and we're told that the Warburton end is closed. So between here and Warburton is a roadhouse called Chukarilia. It's just a it's just a roadhouse for fuel. <laughs> so we'll get there, regain our composure and then decide whether we, yes, we continue on towards Warburton or we pull up.
I mean they haven't had any more rain here in the last 12 hours so depending on how chopped up it is and depending on how water laden it is waterlogged will depend on whether it's going to dry out quickly or not because they can dry out as quick as they you know become clogged myers. Anyway Tom's gone ahead he's you know on the lightest bike and uh, he can handle himself pretty well so he's gone ahead and the first sign of any trouble he'll uh, pull up and We'll take it from there, I guess. took a real out. The conditions improved slightly. Still a few sketchy spots. Certainly a lot, uh, a lot easier and certainly a lot quicker than this morning. Um, I believe there's further complications as we head east. Something about fuel supply. Oh, the other side of Warburton. And Warburton's 250 k's from here. We won't make that today. So I'm not quite sure what we're going to do this afternoon, probably ride on for an hour or so and then find a push camp. Alright, leaving Chukarelia. Uh, Warbit at 255 k's, I think, something like that, about three hours of riding. We'll ride for another hour and then start looking for a bush camp. The road in both directions is closed for heavy traffic and caravans. Uh, time for the four wheel drives only. And of course, motorbikes. I think we're looking for a bush camp soon. Problem is, it's all spinifex around here. Tom must have something marked on his map. like this is us. There's an old fire pit there. We'll probably reuse that. There'll be enough uh, dead fall around to light a fire. Well, there's already a bit of wood there. Perfect. Another stunning sunrise, light breakfast, we'll pack up and uh, hit the road. Alright, clear skies, well clear skies, a bit overcast but no sign of rain. Didn't rain last night which is good, more opportunity for the road to dry out. Don't know what to expect today, hope it is not a repeat of yesterday. A couple of hours to Warburton. For a bit of minor resupply and fuel then make our way towards the Northern Territory WA border onto uh, Yalara Airs Rock for resupply. I don't know if we're going to make that today. We'll know more in a few hours.
roadhouse. Oh, oh, oh. For fuel and a cup of coffee. And then get underway. I forget how far Yulara is. There is a sign around here somewhere that tells you. Anyway, we'll figure it out. YouTubers have cooking segments in their videos and really I'm no different but mine's a little well a little bit different tonight Rutale mm -mm, yummo 